Hello friends. Today I want to talk about how to make money selling on Adobe stock. Why do this? Are you interested in selling your photos and images and make passive income? Today, I want to dive into the world of selling AI images on Adobe stock. I'll guide you through the process starting with generating AI images all the way to uploading them for sale. My name is Brother Lofi. I've been selling AI images on Adobe stock for over a year. I recently had my contributor account suspended, then shortly reinstated. See my other videos in my channel for that. Based on my experience selling AI images on Adobe stock, I can teach you how to be successful selling AI images. Feel free to check out the timestamps in the description to explore specific topics of interest. What is stock photography? Why does it exist? In this article from business.com, we read that quote, a stock photo is an image or other visual content for which users can buy a license for creative or commercial use. Stock photography is appealing because you can search a stock photo site for an appropriate image immediately. The alternative is to hire a photographer to create original content, which can be expensive." End quote. Why people use stock photography? Understand that stock photos are used because they can save a business or newspaper money and time, because when they need an image for their project, they won't need to hire a photographer. The same can be said about illustrations. If you need an illustration for your work, you won't have to draw it yourself or pay someone to do it. And of course, the same is true for different kinds of stock media, such as stock videos. Is selling stock photography worth it? My answer is yes, it is worth it. And it is not too late to start making money selling stock photography, as proven by my other videos. But if you go online, on certain online forums, such as Reddit, some people say no, that it is not worth it. The main key here, if you enjoy creating images, either from your camera, your phone, or through AI, you can make money from that hobby. But if you are expecting to quickly start making money or become rich selling stock photography, then don't do it. Because if you don't enjoy creating the images and slowly building up your income, you won't enjoy selling stock photography. In contrast, making money on YouTube takes way more time and work. As you must have 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours to start making money within 365 days. Yet this is not guaranteed. YouTube can decide not to monetize your channel. Yet you can be making money on stock photography soon in a matter of a couple of months. Let's set up a contributor account on Adobe Stock. The Adobe Stock contributor help pages can guide you on creating the account. Go to the Adobe Stock contributor portal. If you don't yet have a free Adobe ID, click the Join Now button and follow the steps to create one. If you do have an Adobe ID, click the Link My Adobe ID button. Sign in with your Adobe ID and password. Next, continue with the rest of the steps listed in this help page. You need to fill out a tax form. You can then start submitting your files. So when will I get paid? Once you start making sales on Adobe, you can request a payout when you reach more than $25 and at least 45 days have passed since your first Adobe stock sale. You can get paid via PayPal, Payoneer, or Skrill. Overview of what we are going to do in this video today. See what's selling on Adobe stock to get an idea what we can sell. Learn about types of files we can sell on Adobe stock. Create our images using AI. Download the generated images, upscale or not our images. Generate titles and keywords. Upload to Adobe stock. Learn best practices for keeping your account in good standing. Finally, what types of files have sold for me on Adobe Stock? Deciding what to sell, go to the Adobe Stock website to see what is currently selling, stock.adobe.com. You will see stock photos and stock videos. These are photos and videos taken with a camera, a smartphone, 3D model rendered, or created with AI. These videos can come from illustrations or still images that are animated. Also, these videos could be motion graphics, such as simple images or vectors that are animated. Adobe also accepts vector files and PNG files with a transparent background. These can also come from AI images. In other words, there are many, many opportunities to sell AI art in various formats. When I started, I did not have access to an upscaler, but started selling vectors mainly. We can talk more about that later on. So what's on demand? Let's visit the insights page at contributor, Dot stock at adobe.com insights best contributors. Adobe Stock says under how it works, the goal of this feature is to inform you of what type of content is trending based purely on sales data. Scroll down and find types of images that you would be interested in creating, or we can click on some of these images. 
We notice that as we do that, some of the images being sold by these creators are labeled as being generated using AI. This gives us an idea of what's selling and also hope that we are on the right track. We can also go back to stock.adobe.com and search for things we are interested. In my case, for example, I could be interested in religious illustrations. I will search for Jesus and the items that appear are usually items that are in demand or have sold. Clicking on any of these images, we can see the title, which could be used as our prompt when generating images using AI. Or we could take the title and modify it a bit, adding our own ideas if we wanted to, as to generate something slightly different. If you notice, some of the titles are not the complete prompt, they might not include the aspect ratio or the illustration style. If you use Midjourney, you can use the forward slash describe to get some good prompts for images we want model after for our images. This will help us get both a description and a style that we could use. In the end, you can look at the insights in Adobe Stock itself for inspiration. However, I'm gonna venture and say that everything is in demand when it comes to stock images and animations. The reason is that all kinds of people and businesses go to stock websites to find something specific to their niche. So you don't have to commit to a niche like you would do when creating videos on YouTube or blogging. You are free to upload all kinds of images and experiment to see what sells. You would be surprised as to what your best sellers are. We will explore that at the end of this video when we discuss my best sellers. Usually for stock media, I try to make the images as simple as possible so that they can be used in advertising. You don't want an image that is too busy and complicated because then it will not have a simple theme that can be used by the buyer. And also, an image that is too complicated will be confusing to both the buyer and other people that are their buyers. So they will not sell, or if they do, not a lot. Oh, I forgot to say, one thing you can do is to find a list of holidays and events in your country or around the world. Searching online for this information you can plan ahead and generate images around holidays and events. These images are evergreen because they sell around the year as buyers are also preparing ahead for those holidays and gathering images to use for their project ahead of time. Creating images using AI. If you are a photographer or an artist, you can submit your images using a real camera for photos or drawing illustrations yourself. However, I'm neither. I prefer to use AI because it saves me a lot of time and the result is much better than if I had taken the photo myself or draw the illustration. Decide on the format to use to sell our images. I have found out that not only illustrations have been accepted more by stock websites, but also they have sold more for me. So I've concentrated more on selling illustrations than photorealistic images. However, check out my channel for future or recent videos in which I'll go over how to create and sell other types of stock media, such as vectors, photos, and animation. Which AI to use? I have used both Leonardo AI and Midjourney to create my illustrations and have been able to get the images accepted and sold on Adobe Stock without many issues. You can use other AI sites if you are interested, but I know these two better for the quality of images that they produce. The nice thing about Leonardo AI is that you have 150 tokens each day to create images and animations for free. They also have plans to generate unlimited images and video. If you are interested, please check out the link in the description. Leonardo AI has a great feature for creating animation from illustrations. Please check out the link in the description for a video tutorial on using that feature. Before Leonardo AI had the motion feature, I focused on using Midjourney. Currently, I'm signed up to the yearly standard plan so I can save 20% on the subscription. Link in the description. Today, we are then going to create our images using Midjourney. First, let's go to stock.adobe.com. We are going to search for a topic of interest. I like lo-fi images and animations, so we'll search for that. This way we get a sense for the aesthetics, the resolution, the words that we can use in our prompt, etc. Here we find one of my own lo-fi animation. This is a simple illustration I created using Midjourney which I then animated using DaVinci Resolve. See a link in the description for a video tutorial on how you might be able to do this. Let's go to the back end to see how much I've made from this simple animation and other similar ones. We will explore more about my sales later in the video. Creating an image in Midjourney. Now let's head over to Midjourney. We can use the forward slash describe method 
if we wanted to. Let's go back to our image in Adobe Stock. Right click and say, open a new tab. Copy the image URL from the browser, head back to Midjourney and pass this URL to the describe command. Let's wait a bit for it to figure out the image. Now we get four prompts. We can generate an image similar to this using the number buttons. We want to look over the prompts and make sure no artist names are mentioned as that is against the AI generation policies of Adobe Stock for contributors. Clicking on number one, for example, gives us a chance to review and modify our prompt. You can leave the aspect ratio like that, but I usually change it to 16 by nine since I can use the image to generate a 4K animation if I wanted to. So let's change it to 16 by nine, like so. And then let's click on the submit button. While we are waiting, we can click on the other buttons if we wanted and generate the other images using the other prompts. That way we have more options to pick from. Let's talk about generation modes. So now I have a message about the image generation queue being full. Midjourney says you have reached the maximum allowed number of concurrent jobs. Don't worry, this job will start as soon as another one finishes. Let's wait a bit. Like I said, I'm using relaxed mode so that I can get unlimited image generations. Unfortunately, that also means slower image generations than if I were to use fast mode. Fast mode is limited to 15 hours in my plan. Relax mode sometimes is faster, but depending on how many people are using the system, image generation could take a while. So now we can see that there is a way to generate all four prompts from our describe command by hitting the imagine all button. However, because I'm on the relax mode, it won't let me do that. This is okay because it does not take a lot of time to click on each of the four buttons to generate them. Okay, our images were generated from our prompts, except for some reason only three of the prompts were processed, which is okay for what we are doing today. Download the generated images. Let's head over to midjourney.com archive. Here we can individually review and download each image at a time. We can scroll through the image generation by using the mouse or keyboard. We can also add this heart to say we like this and whatnot. And later we can download the ones we marked with this heart. You can also head back to your image generation. From each of the four images, select one you want to upscale. Midjourney will do a good job upscaling more if you don't want to use a separate upscaler. For now, let's go back to the archive. Next to the day you are interested in downloading, like today, click on the plus icon to select them all. Then we can click on download. This will create a zip file for your images. Depending on the number of images you are downloading, this could be multiple zip files. Let's head over to the area where you have downloaded the zip files, depending on the OS and the app you use for unzipping them. I use the archive utility on my Mac. In the settings, I have it set it to delete the original zip file after extraction. If we did not upscale the images in Midjourney, I recommend that you do find an upscaler to batch process the images. Let's discuss this later. Organizing your media. My advice is that you want to organize your images in one place on your computer, external hard drive or network attached storage. Because we wanna do some work on these images before we upload them. So we wanna be able to organize them in a way we can find them in the future. As you start creating more images and videos, your computer hard drive will fill up. Yet, you don't wanna always delete your images and videos as you can reuse them later on in other projects. Invest in a good computer, external hard drive, and or network attached storage. And the good news is, at the end of the year, you can claim these expenses on your taxes. I'm putting some links in the description for some of the gear that I'm using today. They are affiliate links. Let's talk about upscaling. If you use images from Midjourney or any AI, what you're going to notice is that the images are in low resolution, usually 1024 by 1024 or something like that, pixels. So you want to upscale the images by using an upscaler, which will improve your image quality. If you see here on the Adobe Stock website, they want you to aim for the highest quality standards. And so they tell you where your images might be used, like in an ad or website. In the past, I have used different kinds of upscalers. There are some free upscalers out there. I myself currently use Topaz Photo AI. I got this in special during Black Friday. I don't remember the exact price, but they also have a more famous tool called Topaz Gigapixel. 
and it's much cheaper for $100 versus Topaz Photo AI, which is $199. However, they're phasing away the Gigapixel tool and moving its functionality into Photo AI. So that's gonna be the future. Additionally, I wanna mention, there are some free upscalers. If you don't want to pay for an upscaler, you can get this application, upscale.org. And this is an open source project. You can download this application for Linux, Mac OS, Windows, and apparently in the future, they're going to have a cloud version. When I first started using AI images and I wanted to upload them, a lot of them were rejected because they were not of good quality. So like we discussed, you want your images to have good quality as customers need good quality images for their projects. Generating titles and keywords. When we upload to Adobe Stock, we need to provide a title and a set of keywords. Before uploading the image, please note that the image has to be between four megabytes and 45 megabytes. We also wanna make sure we don't submit something created using a copyrighted term or artist name. After uploading, we need to provide a title and a set of keywords. Adobe Stock will suggest both the titles and keywords. That is our title. Now let's talk about keywords. Adobe Stock only accepts 49 keywords. We also know that Adobe Stock focuses on the first 10 keywords for search results. Pro tip, Adobe Stock employee, Matt Hayward, has said that if a keyword is on both the title and the first 10 keywords, you can get an extra boost in search results. He also said that usually you only need between 15 to 25 keywords, and the quantity is not as important as the quality of the keywords. Make sure that the keywords contain relevant information. Adobe Stock wants you to list the most important and most relevant keywords first. Adobe does not want you to spam with keywords, whatever that means. Based on this advice, I have learned to simplify both my titles and my keywords. I currently only use a maximum of about 25 keywords. So less is more. I have now learned not to use too many keywords. Take the title and break it up into keywords like girl, tattoos, headphones, sitting, bed, cyberpunk, anime, bright, colors, neon, lights. Those are 11 keywords. Digital illustration, cinematic lighting, that makes 13 keywords. We can also go to a site like MikeyWorder.com using a simplified title such as a girl with tattoos and headphones sits on the bed. We could get more keywords if we wanted to for a total of 23 keywords, which should be enough. It's up to you. If you think you can add 49 quality keywords, do so. Otherwise, keep it simple. Let's continue to the upload section of this video for more information on uploading and submitting your content. Uploading to Adobe Stock. Let's finish submitting this file for review. First, select the right file type. We are going to choose illustrations instead of photos. Next, change the category. Adobe will figure out a category for you. In our case, it shows hobbies and leisure. We'll leave it like that. Make sure to select the correct language for your title and keywords. I'm going to leave mine to English. Select the created using generative AI tools checkbox, followed by the people and property are fictional. Click to submit your file. Read the pop-ups and checkboxes you are consenting to to finally submit the file for your review. So that's done. Not only can you submit files in the Adobe Stock Contributor portal like we just did, you can upload to Adobe Stock via Secure File Transfer Protocol or SFTP. Clicking on the upload button at the top, we can see more information about SFTP when clicking the Learn More link. When you click the link, you will get the SFTP address, your login username and password, as well as information on FTP clients you can use. Note that videos can only be uploaded using SFTP. Finally, going back to the uploads page, you can see that not only can you upload your media here, you can also upload CSV files. CSV stands for comma separated values. Using CSV files will let you upload metadata for your files in bulk. Metadata are things such as the titles, keywords, and categories for your media. When you upload lots of files like I do, this is useful. If you want more information on CSV files, see the help pages at this link for more information, if interested. Best practices for keeping your Adobe Stock account in good standing. You should read the Adobe Stock Contributor Guide. Additionally, read the Generative AI Content Guidelines, what not to do. Here are some things you may want to avoid doing. No spamming. Don't submit multiple images that are very similar in style, concept, or prompts. See my videos about how I got my Adobe Stock account suspended and then how it got reinstated. Also, see help information on similar versus spamming. 
don't open multiple contributor accounts. There are rare cases in which Adobe Stock allows you to open multiple contributor accounts, but you will read in the forums how people's accounts were suspended or terminated after doing that, so be careful. Don't infringe on copyright or trademark. Don't submit AI content with titles that imply that it is depicting an actual newsworthy event. Don't forget to label AI content as such, like we did in our example. What to do? Keep informed. Read the Adobe Stock Contributor Community form. Be consistent, upload often, but don't spam. See the information about spamming we shared before. The more content you upload, the more chances you have of selling. But be careful of submitting content that is too similar too often. Be patient. Review times can be long, up to eight weeks in certain cases. If your items are in the queue waiting and your submission limit has been reached, don't go and open another account to get around the waiting time. This is against Adobe Stock's policy, and they can suspend or terminate your account. Use the time to focus on other projects. This could be uploading to other sites that accept AI content, such as motion elements. See my videos related to this topic. What's selling for me? Let's go in the back end to see what's selling for me. Under my statistics, let's change the period to 13 months, which is the maximum period for statistics. We can see that I have sold all kinds of media, vectors, videos, photos. I'm gonna speed through some of them. Some of them were created using Midjourney and other AI tools such as Kyber, Leonardo AI, Pixverse, and video editors such as DaVinci Resolve. Vectors were created by converting the images to vectors with tools such as Adobe Express or Vectorizer.ai. Some photorealistic illustrations. Topics include all the Adobe stock categories, including transparent PNG files using Midjourney and Photoscissors.com. Let's go to the dashboard. This shows files sorted by download numbers. Here we can also go to the following tabs and we will see what has sold for me in each of these sections. Illustrations. Photos. Vectors. Videos. And that is all for today. I hope this video helped you get an idea of how you might sell your own AI content on Adobe Stock and make some side income. If you found this video useful, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. Also, if you have any questions or ideas for things you want me to cover in the next videos, let me know in the comments.